Hey guys. <laughs> you like the title? You like it? Wow. There is a lot to unpack here. Probably because I'm a trans man. Get it? <laughs> so to start this video off, I want to talk a little bit about myself. And if you really do not care about that at all, you can go ahead and skip. You have my permission. You have my blessing. You know, first of all, this isn't beef. This isn't hate. My channel is all about calling out stuff that I think is ridiculous. Today so happens to be another YouTuber. You know, watching a lot of people on YouTube, Blair was always a rational person that I used to listen to as a younger trans guy. Not in every aspect, but on a lot of transgender aspects. And as I grew older, everything started to change with the way that I thought. I started to realize I don't agree with her anymore. I just want to add in the way that I thought in the past was very different than the way I think now. I was more gatekeepy. That's not a word. But you know, if someone was trans and a lot different than me, I thought it was weird. I thought that they were not trans. I thought that you had to live the same type of experience that I lived in order to be trans. I was a very closed minded person when it came to that. I, I don't know what phase that was in my life, but it was not a good one because everybody with everything, you don't even have to be trans, has a different experience with everything. My point is I was very closed minded and I wanted to cater to as many people as I possibly could because I just wanted to be looked at as a regular person. I mean, we all do, to be honest with you. We all want to be looked at as just a regular person, okay? Especially when you're trans. Consuming Blair's content for a very long period of time, I've come to the realization that she says things that are untrue a lot of the time. She will make a video about something that she researched for 30 minutes and post it for hundreds and thousands of followers. And I think that's an issue. And now she has a million followers. So that's where it really comes down to the point where you have a responsibility. So the video in particular that I wanted to talk about today is about a woman named Janae Marie Kroc, and she was a power lifter. You know, she's very into fitness, lifting, all that stuff. Blair made a video a thousand percent false about Janae, and I thought it was really, really lame. Anyways, so this video is titled Trans Athlete. I belong in women's sports, get over it. And you know, the person in the thumbnail is actually Janae, and you would think by this title that Janae said that, right? You know, if you're a YouTuber, you gotta get the clickbait, you know? Because you won't get the clicks if you don't do the clickbait. If you make a title interesting enough without clickbaiting it, people will still click it if they genuinely enjoy your content. But if you do have to make it clickbaity, then that's kind of telling. So this video actually highlights a lot of things about trans athletes and her opinion and stuff like that. I'm not really going to dive into the whole trans athlete debate, but just the way she painted Janae really irked me. Started with Janae Marie Croc. She's a trans power lifter, and here is her story. I had was being like the most intense, the craziest. So I was like the alpha of the alphas. And so I was like the last person in the world that anyone suspected. And that's what made it, I think, even more shocking and made it more difficult for me to come out. A lot more people that supported me than I expected, especially some of the big name lifters and, and people that were very well respected in the sport. And that, that was really nice to see. But the, you know, the fan base, there were, there were a lot of people that were very upset about it. <sighs> So, disclaimer. So, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to commentate on a deep breath, but I am going to do that. To me, <laughs> knowing Blair White's content and hearing her do the deep breath, it's kind of like, <sighs> like, this is a lot. Like, this is a lot that we're going to go through. That's kind of the vibe that I got from that. You know, I could be totally wrong. I have no hatred in my heart for Janae. I think Janae seems like a really nice person and obviously is an amazing athlete. I mean... Trans aside, anything else that's a part of the story aside, you cannot deny that that is some amazing bodybuilding. Like, that's crazy. Like, who looks like that? Like, no one looks like that. And I am not trying to make fun of her appearance. I know people will just run to that because people like to just say I'm a big old meanie rather than addressing any of my points. But oh, I'm not going to do that today, Blair. I'm going to address some of your points. I mean, I could sit here and say that you have made fun of people's appearance back in the day. You know, I guess I would rather point out the things that you have said that are false on multiple occasions because it's getting a little bit ridiculous now. And somebody like this doesn't deserve to get so much hate from your audience. You know, if you want to send hate, send it to me. Honestly, I can take hate. You want to rage at your keyboard and write something to me? Go right ahead. It doesn't faze me. But I'm really not making fun of her appearance. I mean, I think that obviously her appearance is outlandish, and I think that even she would admit that, because how could she not? You know what outlandish means? It literally means bizarre or unfamiliar. And you specifically just said you were not going to go after her appearance. Then you called her outlandish. 
But I'm really not making fun of her appearance. I mean, I think that obviously her appearance is outlandish, and I think that even she would admit that, because how could she not? I, I'm doing what I can with the information that you've given me. That's all. But that's not the point. The bigger point is the idea, the concept of Janae competing against biological women is ludicrous. It's almost intentionally ignorant. And anyone who thinks that that is some sort of level playing field is a liar. <laughs> you're lying to her, you're lying to others, and you're lying to yourself, sweetie. You want to know who the real liar is? <laughs> Do you want me to say it? You're lying. Right now, straight, straight to 328,000 people. You lied about the entire thing. And then she got dogpiled and she got hate because of something that you literally took less than an hour to research. If Blair sat down and watched this documentary, it's called Transformer, haha, <laughs> no pun intended, she would have absolutely no material to speak on Janae. She specifically said in her documentary that she will not compete against trans women. And then you have no material for all of your followers to go and attack her and fuel this transphobia that they already have. And something we don't often see is that Janae actually went back post transition and competing against men just because I guess like it was kind of like sh she's gone back and forth competing with men and women based on I don't know what that's an absolutely fantastic and factual statement that you gave to all your followers because I don't know she competed in men's sports all right for a very long time she broke world records as a man she has never ever competed with women ever and she said I also don't plan on it because I understand that it would be unfair. She literally said that. And by the way, if you actually watched the documentary, you would learn that Janae actually was forced to come out because she got outed by somebody. So she ended up coming out and she started dressing and living as a woman. And then she was like, you know, but I, I, I have this passion. I have this passion for lifting, but I obviously can't compete with women. Therefore, she would have to compete with the men. That's why she went back and competed with men because this was her passion, not because she's just not transgender, not because she just wants to switch back and forth between women and men's sports. She was never in women's sports. You're bashing on this person for views to cater to your audience. I know how your audience is. And you know, if Blair ever said something positive about somebody who was not the right kind of trans, her audience would go ballistic. They would be like, Blair, what the happened? You turned into a snowflake. You turned into a blue hair snowflake. Oh, oh, what's this now? You're an SJW. And you know, not everybody is as fortunate to pass as some trans people, and I think it's so fucked up that people will attack those kind of people. They don't have the privilege that Blair has. They don't have the privilege that I have to have surgeries, to have hormones, to pay for all this stuff. Some people have a very hard time passing. That doesn't mean it's okay to bully them. They're trying as hard as they can. Do you know how hard it is for them to go home and sit and look in the mirror and be confident with themselves? When they see people like this spewing this type of stuff, you can't, you just, it's so unfair. Hey guys, I'm just editing, but I also wanted to point out the fact that Janae commented on that video about her and said the information was false. There have been multiple comments and Blair didn't pin it. She didn't apologize for the video. She didn't retract her statements on any other social media platforms. She basically ignored that comment. Janae also tagged her in an Instagram post with a paragraph, you know, stating that there was misinformation and she got hate. Blair still didn't respond to it. There's also been posts on Twitter about how problematic this has been and still nothing. It's just the fact that people are literally telling her to apologize or take the video down and she has ignored it for an entire week while still being online. Like you could have, you obviously saw those posts. One of them has like 12,000 likes. It's just the fact that it's been so long and she still chose not to apologize or say anything anywhere. You know, people might claim, that, oh, she's going to make a video. Oh, she's going to do that. Well, even if she did, it's been too long. Like you could have posted something on Instagram or on Twitter. So it's like at this point, it's blatantly ignoring the whole thing. Moving on from that topic, I wanted to talk about her defense of JK Rowling for a little bit. And I know everybody has their own opinion about JK Rowling, okay? You know, I would think anybody with half a brain would realize that the way JK Rowling comes off is hostile. I mean, have you read her essay at all? Blair has made a few videos defending JK Rowling because again, if she didn't, her audience would go ballistic. So I genuinely cannot believe I'm here making a third JK Rowling video. Yeah, I can't believe you're making a third video defending JK Rowling. <laughs> Literally after all of the stuff that she has said and done about trans people. There was totally no malicious intent there with JK Rowling ever. You know, she was just trying to be logical and rational and educate people. Now, if you guys don't know, JK Rowling came out with a book. It's 900 pages and one of the characters in it dresses up as a woman. He's a man. He dresses up as a woman and kills people like that. 
In this video, Blair claims that there is only one page where that character is discussed. That is false. Once again, shocker, shocker, Blair White is using false information once again. If you only pay attention to the mob online and to social media and to people who are so desperate to attack JK Rowling, you would think this book is literally like a PSA against trans people, that it's a book that paints trans people as evil, as killers, etc. But no honest person who has actually read the book, I mean really read it, not just reacted to a description or reacted to whatever, if you've actually seen it, there is no way you could feel that way. Oh, that's funny, because I actually do have a friend who read the book. She actually made a video about this video too. Her name is Samantha Lux. At the very most, the concept of being a transvestite makes a very quick, brief, fleeting appearance in the book and it's extremely unimportant. It comes in the form of one line in the book, one page in a 900 page book. And yet again, that is completely false because if you check out this video, that character is mentioned so much. They have a whole backstory. <laughs> so you read the book, Blair? Did you read it? Like you watched the documentary on Janae for that one whole hour. You read the 900 page book. Interesting. That's very interesting. So let me show you a clip from Samantha's video just to show you how often this character is mentioned in the book. Saying that it was just one line is just not true. That's just a blatant lie. Firstly, Dennis Creed, which is, you know, the person I'm going to refer to him as Creed. Creed describes himself as girlish earlier in life, which points to his own perceived divergence from gender norms. But wait, this is where it gets really good or bad, I guess. Rowling writes that due to a traumatic past, Creed found refuge in fantasy, and sometimes he would incorporate materials from the real world into those fantasies. Materials such as women's underwear that he would steal from strangers as well as family members to secretly wear and pleasure himself in. Whether this was intentional or not, Rowling is creating associations between Creed's wearing of women's clothing and his predatory behavior. And then refers to all of that as Creed's secret fantasy life, which keep that in mind, I'll get back to that in a second. A co-worker of Dennis Creed claimed that Creed would sometimes go out in women's clothing to imitate a pop star. The co-worker says that this made some of the other workers feel uncomfortable and they thought that he was quote unquote, you know, queer. If he was truly just supposed to be a cis male with a female disguise, why does he have a history of gender nonconformity? Why would that be relevant? So it was only one part in the book, right? According to the video that you made defending JK Rowling. It was only one part in the book. The book proceeds to say that Creed's secret fantasy life became more sadistic to the point that he was soon arrested for the torture of a 22 year old girl. I cannot make this shit up. JK Rowling is drawing connections between Creed's gender nonconformity and his murderous, sadistic behavior. If you actually do want to watch her video, I will link it in the description so you can check it out. It's just the misinformation, man. And it's not even about is JK Rowling transphobic at this point. It's about Blair, why do you keep lying about things? I don't, I, I don't even have a follow up to that. It's just like, why are you constantly lie without any proper research? Is your research like a 10 minute Google? search is that what it is before you post it to a million followers because if it is that's really really bad <laughs> and you're gonna damage a lot of people just to go back to referencing the book a lot of people are mad about the book because of jk rowling's twitter presence it's like if any other author wrote this book i don't think there would be an issue it's the fact that jk rowling wrote it and we know her stance on trans people she thinks and transphobes think that trans women are men who dress up in wigs with makeup and dresses. That's what transphobes think about trans women. Earlier than this video, Blair made another video where it's called JK Rowling isn't transphobic, you're just sensitive, right? Because we are all sensitive snowflakes when it comes to JK Rowling. To get back on topic of if I think JK Rowling is transphobic, I do not think JK Rowling is transphobic. I think she's probably someone who is paying attention to this culture war happening on gender. And if we're just basing off of her tweet, I don't see anything transphobic in her tweet. That was a big reason, her simply stating that biological sex is real. And if we're getting to a point where we can't say that, girl. Oh my God, I've said it a thousand times and I will say it again. People don't think JK Rowling is transphobic for saying biological sex is real. Most of the time, trans people agree with that. I would say 99% of the time, trans people agree that biological sex is real. No shit. That's why I transitioned. The reason that they say JK Rowling is transphobic is because if you literally look at the rest of her tweets and the way that she delivers them, it's not a positive thing. It has never been a positive thing. Have you read her essay? She literally puts Magdalene Burns on a pedestal 
Do you guys know who that is? She spewed so much hate, so much hate on Twitter, so much hate on YouTube, posted so much bullshit. She actually misgendered Blair White, all right? And a lot of people don't do that. Even transphobic people will not misgender Blair White. She misgendered Blair White. And again, if you actually take the time to do the research and you watch Jamie Dodger's video on the JK Rowling essay, because she wrote a giant essay on gender and like her own experiences and stuff like that. Jamie actually broke down the entire thing in a, a whole video. I'll link it down below because it's so much to talk about. So on Blair's third video about JK Rowling, it is titled, JK Rowling said I am biologically male. You know, she mentions the tweets that JK Rowling has made and explains why they are not transphobic and why they are true. And then you have this tweet, which I found from one of JK Rowling's friends who is trans saying, I have to say this, JK Rowling is one of the most supportive people I've ever met with regards to individual choices to be whoever they want to be. The fact that she seems to continuously be on the chopping block as anti-trans is absolute nonsense. Give her a break. So does that person's does this trans person who is a friend of JK Rowling's, does this person's voice matter? Or does George Takai and all the woke allies matter? Oh yeah, because her having a trans friend automatically means she cannot be transphobic in any way, shape, or form. I was friends with a transphobe, Ariel Scarcella. And I will proudly say that. <laughs> I fucked up. I had so many people talking to me on Twitter saying, Sam, why are you friends with Ariel Scarcella? She's like notoriously transphobic. And when I met her in person, she was not transphobic. She just acted like a regular person. She treated me like a regular person. There was no transphobia there. But when you go back and you look at her Twitter and the things that she has said about trans people, she would never say that to me in person. So it's like, you have to be the right kind of trans for certain transphobic people to pander to. Okay, just because they're nice to one trans person doesn't mean that they're automatically not transphobic. That doesn't even make any sense. Me and Ariel agreed on so many things in person. And to be honest, my opinions have changed. She never came off as a toxic person. She never came off as the person that she portrays herself on social media. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what happened. It was either her just being completely fake to me or her grifting online. I don't know which one it is. I still don't. And I honestly do not care. So I ended up cutting off that friendship because I did not like the stuff she was saying about trans people online. It didn't align with how she treated me in person, but I was the right kind of trans to her. The conversation gets very muddied because people who are on the outside looking in at this whole fiasco happening, they really do think trans people are turning on JK Rowling and don't like JK Rowling anymore because they think JK Rowling is transphobic. But I want you guys the next time you hear someone talking about how transphobic someone is, please pay attention to who is saying it. I promise you, I promise, 90% of the time, it's not even a trans person saying it. JK Rowling is transphobic. I guess I'm the 10%. Because like I said, trans people go through hell to be who they are. Trans people- And trans people do go through hell to become who they are. Janae is one of them. She had to give up her passion to transition into a woman but yet you still had the audacity to go on your channel and bash on her and make total false accusations when there's a literal whole documentary on Netflix about her. Anyways, you know, with all that being said, I just wanted to point out some of the things that I saw. I mean, I'm not the nicest person all the time either. I call out bullshit. I'll make fun of people for doing cringy stuff, but I feel like Blair feels like she has this responsibility to her audience because if she does not give them what fuels them, what fuels their hatred, obviously they're gonna answer subscribe and i know what her audience is like i've seen the people that have been dogpiled by her audience and it's not pretty and to be honest with you please dogpile me don't dogpile the people that she makes videos about do it to me because i could care less i will go read your hate comments on a beautiful vacation with the ad revenue that you have given me and read them as a, as, as a good laugh all right so leave them to me don't shit on these outlandish people shit on the pedophiles shit on the actual people who are causing problems i think it's only appropriate for you to apologize to janae because you painted her out to be this person that she is not and also your defense of jk rowling read her essay jk rowling is not coming from a good place and clearly you aren't either